sing, Don't Forget the Sabbath, Church Hymnal 388, Don't Forget the Sabbath.
let us sing Standing on the Promises, Church Hymnal 518, Standing on the Promises. Let's all humbly kneel down as we ask the Lord in prayer. Almighty Father, our great God in heaven, we gather here tonight to praise you, your name, and worship you in the beauty of holiness. We adore you, Lord, for the innumerable blessings you bestowed upon us. Lord, tonight we confess our sins. Some are unknown and unknown. We are unworthy in thy sight, but because of your precious blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary, we were made whole and become worthy. Help us, O Lord, to live a life patterned to thy character, so that we may also live like you. Hide us behind the cross so that our sinful character will be hidden, and our love, and your love may be seen in us. Thank you so much for the bountiful blessings and the sustenance of life, that your grace is sufficient for all of us. Tonight, we pray for our speaker, Pastor Pons Kujamat. Speak through him so that we may hear words that will inspire us and strengthen our faith as we serve you each day. Thank you so much, dear God, for the blessings and guidance to each one of us. We ask all of these things. In the sweet name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Happy Sabbath. <clears throat> In behalf of the Deaconess Department, we would like to welcome you to our Vesper meeting. It is an honor 
and privilege. To present to you our program in our own way <clears throat> of worship and giving thanks to the Lord. Let us remember that our life begins and ends not with a word, not with the work we do for ourselves, but with the work God does for us as we worship and rest. <clears throat> Our song service and opening song was led to us by Brother Edwin Panuelos. On the piano is Sister Ivy Escasa. Our opening prayer was led to us by our own PAC elementary mentor, Ma'am Yulita Humwad. And a special number will be rendered to us by the Yapak group. Our closing song will still be led by our choruser, Brother Edwin Panuelos. And the closing prayer will be given to us by our speaker. Tonight, we are truly blessed to have a superb speaker, pastor, who needs no long introduction. <clears throat> he is the man who has given us countless inspirations and laughs. <clears throat> man of God, friend to us. He is Pastor Ponching Kojamat. May we have a heart Prepare tonight to worship and focus on the Lord. Happy Sabbath.
Thank you, Praise Advocate Chorus. Magandang gabi po. Happy, delightful Sabbath. You might be wondering, maybe Sir Ponch, after the talk, will fly to USA or to somewhere, somewhere in Asia. Sabi na si Jantico, Sir Ponch, where are you going? Sabi ko, it's my flight tonight. I'll spend my Sabbath in the, air, in the airplane. Well, the title of the message for tonight is Travel Light. Have you traveled light? Have you experienced going to different places in Asia or even in Europe and America? And after finding in the airport, you are or you were over baggage. Naranasan niyo na ba yon? Many times I have experienced that. I was always over baggage. And so the lesson was you have to be sure prior to your flight using tools that you have to weigh, weigh in your luggage or baggage to avoid complications. Traveling light. Let me share with you some of my travel facts. 1997, I started applying for a visa with my family, B1, B2 visa. That's an exchange visitor's visa. We went to the U.S. Embassy. After a few hours, we were granted the assurance that we would be having our visa. And on our way home, we were all happy. Then there was a call from the U.S. Embassy. Is this Mr. Kujamat? Yes, sir, I'm Mr. Kujamat. Well, we'd like to say sorry, your visa has been cancelled. Two hours after. From 1997, I applied again. U.S. visa up to 2007. And what I received was multiple denial. Ten years. Been persistent applying for U.S. visa and been receiving a lot of multiple U.S. denials. Year 2001, I tried to go to New Zealand and apply for work. I was given a, a man's visitor's visa in New Zealand. I went to the mission. I went to the school. I did my teaching demo. I was accepted. Mr. Kujamat, you would be teaching grade 8, and you would be acting as a part-time counselor. So in six months' time, you would be bringing your family to New Zealand. In, in three months, three years' time, you will have your permanent stay or permanent residence visa in New Zealand. So I went back to the Philippines. I did all the requirements, medical requirement, uh, legal requirements, etc., etc. It was my time coming out of the Philippines. I was so happy. And when I reached the New Zealand embassy to get my clearance, the consul said, Mr. Kujamat, I'm sorry. Again, we will not allow you to go to New Zealand. I was denied. Years ago, I went to the United States to apply for a work as a pastor. It's a Filipino pastor. There was an interview. I was one of those people who were interviewed. We were 10, I think, 10 of us being interviewed. Again, I was denied. Travel facts. In Thailand, my things was ransacked by the authority. They, they found something in my luggage. Unfortunately, I lost the key. And I forgot the number, the combinations of number. And so what they did was they destroyed my things. It was in Thailand. I was in Malaysia preparing to come back here in the Philippines. I tried to come out of the airport just to visit, just to have the, a view of Malaysia. Then I heard, I overheard somebody shouting. It was in Malaysia. It was said, Singapore, Singapore, Singapore. And so I was very excited and very interested. So I approached the, the man. Do you mean to say from Malaysia I can reach Singapore? Yes. It's only, I think, a five hours travel to Singapore. And so I canceled my tour coming here to the Philippines. I went to Singapore. Then I traveled from Singapore to Thailand. I think two years ago I was in Perth. 
I took the Malaysian airline coming back here from Perth. My brand new mini iPad, I left in the airplane. Travel facts. What else? 2008, my first travel with my family going to the United States. 2010, 2015, with the YAPAC, with the Praise Advocate Chorus, with the Young Ambassadors, we traveled to the United States to attend the General Conference Session. Well, we have, or I had a lot of travel facts. And I could never forget those facts, especially the overbaggage where it took us a lot of money paying for the overbaggage. You see, brothers and sisters, in the same manner as Christians, as brothers and sisters in Christ, our journey is not only towards to these beautiful places in the world, but as Christians, our journey is towards heaven. Do you believe in that? Say amen. Unfortunately, not all who believe in heaven will go to heaven. That's very unfortunate. Why? Because the Bible says only those who believe in Christ will go to heaven. As the Bible says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father. No man will go to heaven unless you embrace Jesus as a person, as a Savior, and as a friend. Even Christ himself has said, not all who believes in me and not all who does good things will go to heaven unless you do the will of the Father. There's a reason why we have to be serious. We have to be sincere and honest in our intimate relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you believe, do I believe that I will go to heaven? Well, of course, I believe that I will go to heaven because my assurance is my acceptance of Jesus Christ. And I believe that's also your relationship with Christ, giving a 100% guarantee that you will enter heaven. Unfortunately, our journey towards heaven becomes so tiresome, boring. Sabihin natin, why? Because our travel, our journey is not light. What do I mean? Being in the work for 30 years, from 1987 to this year, I was in our work and been visiting a lot of churches, been discussing a lot of things with our brethren, having a lot of counseling sessions, and I have observed a lot of things. A lot of our people are planning to go to heaven. A lot of our church members are planning to go to heaven. Unfortunately, it's miserable to believe that a lot of those people who plan to go to heaven, who have decided to go to heaven, have a lot of what? Extra baggage, extra load on their backs and in their hearts. Well, we have a lot of burdens in this life. Kaya nga alam niyo po, imbis na maging masaya ang biyahe natin, hindi nagiging masaya. I have observed my kids. We traveled from Loma Linda, San Bernardino, California, going to Texas. It took, it took us 36 hours. And it was very uncomfortable. Sabi ng mga anak ko, ang hirap naman ito, ang tagal-tagal ng biyahe. We have a lot, we had a lot of stopovers to, to, to ease our stiff body from the pain of long travel. Brothers and sisters, how is your travel towards heaven? How is your journey towards heaven? Do you have extra baggage at your back? And these baggages are pulling you down so that your journey towards heaven is not very, very excited, is not, sabihin natin, sobrang saya. Well, let me suggest tonight some counsels from the Bible. If you want your journey to heaven to be Wow, super exciting that you, you have this hope anticipating of this, what we call the imminent return of Jesus Christ. The Bible has given us counsels to unload some of those over baggage because if we carry those baggages, we will never enjoy your Christian life. I will never enjoy my Christian journey towards heaven. Let me just share with you three things. We have a lot of those suggestions. Well, the Bible says, my first suggestion. The Bible says, Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30. Ang sabi doon ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo ay ganito. 
Come unto me, all of you who are carrying your heavy load of burden, and I will give you rest. Our premise is, the way to heaven is Jesus Christ. And if you want to enjoy your journey towards heaven, you have to bring all of those extra baggages in the foot, in the cross, so that you will feel light in your journey to heaven. What's the first burden? What's the first baggage? Ang unang bagahe po na kinakailangang i-let go natin. The first baggage that we need to let go, that we need to free ourselves from, is the baggage of guilt and shame. Been talking to some of our students, to some of our members. They believe in Jesus. They believe in heaven. They believe that Jesus is soon to come back. They believe in a lot of things in the Bible. Unfortunately, they, jo- they don't enjoy they, their, their Christian life. Why? Because their lives, their eyes are focused not on the cross, but on the sins of the past. We call that guilt and shame. And what is guilt? Guilt is feeling responsible because you did something bad in the past. Nagkamali ka sa nakaraan, may ginawa kang mali. You did something very shameful in the past. And because of that, that guilt is being carried in the mind, being carried in the heart, and that makes you uncomfortable. That's the reason why every time you've been invited to sing in front, you were invited to play the piano, you've been invited to preach and sing here in front. You cannot do it. Why? Because your focus is on the things that you did in the past. Hindi ko pa kaya mag-preach. Gumawa ako ng kasalanan. Hindi ko pa kaya umawit. I just did something wrong in the past. Hindi ko pa kaya mag-play ng piano kasi yung nasaktan ko nandito sa church. We call that guilt. And every time you focus on that guilt, it makes you feel shameful. It makes you feel what? Shame. You're ashamed. It's very regretful. You feel you're unloved. You're, you're not loved. You're not cared. You feel abandoned and rejected because of what you did in the past. If you want to enjoy your journey to heaven, the Bible is telling us, come on, my brother, come on, my child, come on, my sister. Bring your guilt and shame to the foot of the cross. Ang tangay, tangay lang pong antidote, the only antidote, the only remedy for guilt and shame is 1 John 1, 9, where the Bible says, you have to confess your sins because God is just and faithful that He will forgive all your sins. Do you believe in that? Say Amen. Do you want to enjoy going to heaven? Are you still reflecting of those things that you did in the past? You hurt your ex-boyfriend. You hurt your ex-girlfriend. You hurt your spouse. You hurt your husband. You disobeyed your parents. You dishonored your mother-in-law, your in-laws. You broke a heart in the church. And, it, and it's causing you a lot of guilt and shame. Brothers and sisters, the only, the only payment for that is what Christ did in the cross. Unload that. Kinakailangan isuko na po natin lahat yan, mga minamahala kapatid, because you will never enjoy your journey towards heaven. You have to travel light. Ito pong bag na to. Ito pong bag na to. Anywhere I go, I made sure I will only bring one bag. Ito po yung dala ko. Ito po yung dala ko. Paborito ko po ito. Sabi sa akin nung teller o nung nagbebenta dyan sa HP, Sir, this bag is very, very good. Because if you're tired, you can sit okay, on, that, uh, on that bag. You can even play with your bag. Okay? Hard case. Travel light, brothers and sisters. Philippine travel, international travel, I use this bag. I made sure I will travel light. In going to heaven, by God's grace, make sure that you will also travel light. Let go of those guilt. Let go of those shame. And you will enjoy worshiping God and serving your church. Amen? Number two. Number two. If you want to travel light going to heaven, you have to let go your grudge. What is a grudge? What is a grudge? Guilt and shame is related to you doing something bad on others. That's guilt. 
When you focus on your guilt, it brings about shame. And what is grudge? Grudge is any person you love so much and they're doing something bad to you. They are hurting you and it's causing you what? Ill feeling. And that ill feeling, you try to nourish it, you try to nurse it, it becomes what? A grudge. Any ill feeling, any hurt that you nurse in the heart, you try to nurture in the heart, we call that grudge. Inaway ka ba ng asawa mo and you cannot forgive your husband, you cannot forgive your wife, and until now, it's been many, many years, those ancient hurting past until now is alive in the heart, we call that grudge. Hindi mo makalimutan, you're now married, you're now married, and you're holding your wife's hand, but still in the mind, your thoughts are still lingering on your ex-girlfriend. Nasa isip mo pa rin yung nasakit sa, nanakit sa'yo, we call that grudge. Any negative, any ill feeling in the past, you're hurt by your parents, you feel abandoned and, and rejected, you're hurt by your best friends. You feel rejected and abandoned. You're hurt by your, your pastor because you're, you feel rejected and abandoned. And you try to, to, to hold that feeling in the heart. And it's been years. We call that grudge. Do you think you will enjoy your journey towards heaven, your journey to heaven, if you nurse that grudge in the heart? I don't think so. That's the reason why Jesus said, Come unto me, you who are carrying grudge in the heart, and I will give you rest. Mga minaman na kapatid, magpahinga na po tayo. Let the heart rest. Let your mind have this what we call peace and serenity. Instead of nursing grudge in the heart, why not nurse the love of Jesus that is 100% assured to you as his and her child? Isipin niyo po ngayon, I don't know you personally. Pero meron pa ba kayong nakaraan ngayon na hanggang ngayon, hindi niyo pa mapatawad ang inyong kapitbahay. Hindi niyo pa mapatawad ang iyong biyanan. Hindi niyo pa mapatawad ang iyong ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend. Hindi mo mapatawad ang iyong asawa, ang iyong mga anak. We call that garage. That's the reason why the Bible says, Ephesians 4.26, don't, don't, ever allow the sun to, to, to set without settling your, your anger, your grudge. Because if this grudge is, is prolonged in the heart, it becomes anger, and anger when it's conceived, it becomes hatred, and hatred when it's, it's, it becomes full matured, what will happen? It will lead you to a lot of complications. You can even murder people. You can even destroy others and even hurt others physically because of that grudge in the hearts. That's the reason why the Bible says, please don't allow the sun to set without settling your issues with one another. That's the reason why the Bible says, we have to love one another, forgive one another, esteem one another. The antidote for grudge, the antidote for those ill feelings is what we call forgiveness to that person. Mga minamahala kapatid, do you want to enjoy your journey to heaven? Do you want to enjoy your travel to heaven? If you want to enjoy, please, by God's grace, unload those baggages that will drag you down, pull you down, and it will make you miserable. And we call that garage. Sama ng loob. Palayain nyo na po ang sarili nyo kung sino ka man. Ako po, pinalaya ko na ang sarili ko. Pinalaya ko na. Nakasakit na rin ako ng kapwa ko eh. Okay. Let me just share with you, no? Gusto niyo ba ng kwento? With my wife's permission. Nakasakit na po ako ng kapwa ko. Nasakta na rin ako. Years ago, I was invited to speak in one of the churches here in Manila. And before I preach, there was a special number after the special number, I talk. After my talk, I approached my wife asking her, how's my preaching? She never responded. What she said was, 
I think I know this special number. The one who, who gave this special number. What do you mean you know the one who gave this special number? Ponching, titigan mo yung nagbigay ng special number. I think she is your ex-girlfriend. Nakalimutan ko na ang itsura. It's been years. Almost 20 years. 17, 18 years. Gone are those days. And so I tried to look again at the woman. Sabi ko, tama ka, siya nga. So I asked permission from my wife. Wife, sabi ko sa kanya, is it okay to come close to, to my ex and say hi? Sige, lapitan mo, lapitan mo. And so nilapitan ko yung babae. And I extended my hand. Extend my hand with a smile. And I was refused. And I saw a frown or sad face on her face. Sabi ko sa sarili ko, siguro hindi pa niya ako napatawad. Grudge. <laughs> Meron ba kayong ganong karanasan? You will never enjoy coming here in the church. You will never enjoy serving the Lord if you try and try and try to nurse a grudge in the heart. The counsel is, let go of that grudge. Free yourself from that grudge and you will enjoy your journey towards heaven. Amen. Tapusin natin to, lastly. Let go of guilt and shame. Let go of grudge. Number three, let go of negativity. Let go of those self-destructive talks about yourself. The Bible says, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. Again, Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honorable, think of all those things. Don't you know that most of our pains and disappointments are creation of our own thinking? You're hurt, why? Because you choose to be hurt. You're down, why? Because you choose to be down. Instead of focusing on Christ, instead of focusing on what Christ has done in the cross, you continue to focus on yourself. Kawawa naman ako. Iniwan ako. Kawawa naman ako. Wala na akong trabaho. And you say a lot of bad things about yourself. Brothers and sisters, alam niyo ba kung ayaw niyong masaktan sobra-sobra? Why not fill your, your minds, your heart with the good things that Christ has done in your life, in the past, in the present, and the things that He will do in the future? Kamusta kayo? Anong tingin yung sarili nyo? Every time you look at the mirror, instead of looking the goodness of God, what you see? Ang sabi yung sarili mo, ang pangit ko naman. You're, you're very, very preoccupied on self. Instead of looking in the mirror what Christ has done in your life, that in Christ's sight, in heaven's eyes, you're beautiful and you're created after God's image, what do you do? You look at the Hollywood actors and actress. You make actors and actress as your standard of beauty. You make the mapute as your standard for the beauty of the skin. You, you make people who have tall nose as a standard for a beautiful face. Why not make the Bible? Why not make what the Bible says that our standard is what God says in Genesis what? 1, 26 and 27. You're created after God's image. You're created male and female after God's likeness. Amen? You say a lot of things, negative things about yourself. Why? Because your focus is on self. Masyado kang nakatingin sa sarili mo. Pag maliit ang feeling mo, pangit. Pag matangkad, sobrang tangkad, pangit. Pag maitim, pangit. Pag kulot ang buhok, pangit. Sino nagsabi sa'yo, pangit ang kulot ang buhok? Sino nagsabi sa'yo, pangit ang maitim? Brothers and sisters, let go of negativity. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honorable, whatsoever things are pure, think of all those things. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. So instead of focusing on self, why not focus 
on what Christ again has done in the cross. If you're carrying heavy load of burden, the burden of negative, destructive, illogical, irrational self-talks, why not focus on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Amen? Pwede bang sabihin nyo ngayon sarili nyo, Panginoon, salamat po. Ang ganda ko pala, ang pogi ko pala. Please. Hindi nyo masabi, no? Hirap na hirap kayo. Kasi you still define beauty in terms of the color of the skin. You still define beauty in terms of the tallness and the shortness of the nose. You still define beauty in terms of the texture of the hair. Curly is not beautiful. Straight hair is beautiful. Short person is ugly. Tall person is handsome. Who tells you that? Your beauty lies in what happened in the creation and what happens in the cross. Amen? Double amen nga dyan. Brothers and sisters, do you want to enjoy your journey towards heaven? Do you want to travel light? So again, in closing, let go of guilt and shame. Let go of grudges, of ill feelings towards the other person. And number three, let go of all those negative, destructive, illogical, irrational, humiliating, putting down statements about yourself. And instead of focusing on self, why not focus on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Good evening, and God bless us all. Who is blessed with the sermon tonight? Can you say amen? Amen, amen yeah. Uh, it's now time to receive our offerings. For our closing song, let us sing, let us sing, the Lord is my light. Um, Church Hymnal 515, the Lord is my light. Shall we all stand?
Father God in heaven, we're so blessed to have a God like you who understands our ins and outs and even all of our emotional hang-ups. So tonight, loving Father, all of those issues in our lives we bring to the cross. Please, loving Father, help us to travel light so that we will enjoy our journey towards heaven. And before we leave this place, loving Father, please fill us with your spirit that we will continue to reflect the character of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, loving Father, for the assurance of salvation. Thank you so much, loving Father, for the assurance that we will all enter the pearly gates of heaven because of your Son, Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.